Ladies and gentlemen, my comprehensive coverage of Tropical Storm Isaias continues, as does my monthly fundraiser. If you would like to contribute to Thor News to keep me doing what I do the way I do it, you can send a snail mail through USPS, and I love the USPS, and there's a smile on my face anytime I get a letter in the mail. I got a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron, and only $1,489 left to raise, with about 4.7 days left to go. So if you'd like to contribute for all the work that I've done all year, all 7.7 .7 years, or all the work I'm going to be doing this hurricane season, I would super appreciate it, and that every single dollar helps. Now, on to the big story. This is 2020, and we fight a different boss fight almost every single month. Greg Forster asks, did we skip the murder hornets? Because it feels like we skipped the murder hornets. 2020 madness. And so we have wave after wave after wave after wave after wave rolling off of Africa. So even if we get lucky with Isaiah's, which is now a 1003 strength tropical storm, uh, white spinning wheel. Don't make me look bad, please. That the next or the next or the next might be very dangerous. In the meantime, we are now tracking Isaiah's and treating it like it is going to be a danger to Florida and the East Coast, because we have a lot of reasons to believe that. And we are looking to the guidance from the awesome and incredible cranky weather guy. In the meantime, we wait. It is a small yet healthy system. All right, Cranky does these gifts. It gives us kind of the box of areas of impact for us to get an idea of what we might de be dealing with, because there are train changes that can come in the track. Hopefully the atmospheric defense team and the prayer warriors are helping, but it's a matter of how close will it get to Florida? Will it impact Florida? How close will it get to North Carolina? Will it impact Carolina? And then how close will it get to New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts? We're tracking, you know, when we are like three days away from any type of Florida impacts, and we are about five or six days away from any type of a New England impact. And so very small changes in the storm can have some pretty big effects. And we will be tracking them almost every step of the way. Right now, we're tracking the Euro. Although we're throwing the models out a little, we're definitely using them for some type of guidance. But we now have the Euro hot off the presses, which shows it coming close to Florida, not making landfall, but possibly making landfall in the Carolinas. This is one run of many, and many runs yet to come even from the Euro, but this will give us a better idea of where it is headed. And it is a crapshoot. I'm hoping and praying that it does a Dorian and that so we track its death and then nothing really happens. Uh, there are no major effects, but this is 2020. And so I think the idea that this passing without any major effects are slim. All right, the Euro puts its square in New York on the 5th, which is Wednesday, which is about five or six days. So the Euro takes it from North Carolina and puts it, it goes right up the coast. This is the situation I've been predicting for about 10 or more days now. I'd made a bunch of hurricane predictions last year. I was totally wrong, but it appears all my predictions were one year off. So people in New York, New Jersey, North Carolina need to be preparing. And until uh, this passes Florida, I think people in Florida need to just be prepared, be aware. Although Floridans are tough people who won't usually last out a hurricane unless it's like a Cat 4, Cat 5. So the Euro puts a hurricane in New York. The GFS puts a hurricane pretty much in New York and Massachusetts. It, it scrapes the whole coast, and depending on its intensity, it comes in through Carolina, and then it goes runs the whole coast, and then run, runs out. That is the GFS. The GFS parallel shows pretty much the same track. It has it at about a Category 2, Category 3 hurricane when it makes landfall in New York and Boston. The CMC is the one that says, hey, I'm going into Florida as a tropical storm, and I'm not going to be much danger or damage. The nav gems say I'm scraping the coast and then going into Massachusetts as a Category 1 hurricane on Tuesday, August 4th, which would be about five or six days away. The icon has it make landfall in North Carolina as a tropical storm, run up the whole coast as a tropical storm. 
and then be gone, but it has one behind it, which is one of the waves we were watching. But this would be the best case scenario, just a heavy tropical storm that gives everybody rain, but no major problems. And although this is not done yet, uh, it does look like tropical storm is the ES. Dang it, has been sucked through the Mona Passage between Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, which means it will not disrupt its formation and intensification very much. And in a worst case scenario, it basically makes some type of short landfall uh, just above north of Miami, and then it dips back out into the ocean, restrengthens, goes up through North Carolina, and then moves up the coast as Category 1, Category 2 hurricane, possibly even Category 3. It is possible. Everybody needs to be staying aware, have a plan in place. And Texas reported 313 deaths from the coronavirus today. California reported 194 deaths. Florida's, I think, got a major over 100 death toll. The plague is real. The same thing I've been telling you, all the evidence points towards a plague being real. And so this is one of the things we have to deal with during this situation. That's why extra prayer, planning, and preparedness needs to go in to this hurricane season. And I would imagine this thing is definitely going to be a big rain maker. The closer it gets to landfall, the areas and the exact impacts, we won't know until a day or two. But every single few hours, we should be able to hone in on where it's going and what damage it might do. Well, you know, there's a lot of unanswered questions. And if you want to hunt for outliers, an eastward one exists if the continental features are more imposing and weaken the Atlantic Ridge, allowing the final kick four to enter the picture earlier and push the entire corridor further off the coast, yielding glancing blow north of East Florida. And so that's what I'm talking about. If if it comes in, I mean, it has potential to come in as a Category 1, possibly Category 2 hurricane, clip Florida, come back out, and then go up the coast or bend out to sea. But it would still, some type of landfall would have still happened. And it has that buzzsaw look, dude. And remember, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. We've got hurricane season. Like, we have six more weeks before peak hurricane season comes. So any damage we take during any of these, it will all add up by the end of the year. Cranky saying, until all those influences, influential processes run course, we'll stick with a reasonable center course of which most recent WPC forecast has. Mind you, North Carolina is four to five days away. Maine or Massachusetts, whatever MA is, is five to six days away. Seeking precise tracking impacts using models or otherwise 96 to 144 hours out, expect shifts. And so we can get lucky. Hopefully the atmospheric defense team can pull off some Amazing things, because hopefully my, that theory is not incorrect. It'd be nice to know that guys are out there playing defense and women, but at this point nobody knows. So I would be, I would knew this. Everybody here, I would prepare for some type of category one, category two, possibly category three hurricane land for fall, and even Florida. Like until this thing passes, it's 2020. Please continue to pay attention and have a plan, just in case your intuition tells you it's time to go. Because the last year run had this thing coming all the way over Florida and then popping back out into the water and then going back up the coast. But if you want to hunt for outliers, a westward one exists if the west extension strengthens over top and enhances the main ridge. This would effectively decay the cyclone into rainfall enhancer anywhere north of South Florida. And so, like, there is a possibility the ridge will push it more into Florida, which would then, of course, disrupt its intensity up the coast but would be more intense and a bigger problem for Florida in the near future, like three days. And so, you know, Maddie Lanza reminded us that um, 2020 is very sure why not, you know? All right, I can no longer move my screen around. I cannot move my screen and get off the screen. So I'm going to wrap this one up. I'll be back later. If you would like to contribute, I would appreciate it. I will be working my butt off for you guys pretty much until this thing is gone with a little bit of sleep in between, but not much. I haven't gotten a lot of sleep in July. We've had a run from Hannah to Douglas, and now we're going through ZS together. So if you'd like to make a contribution, I got a snail mail and special shout out to Mikey T and the USPS and then uh, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Patron. You guys are utterly amazing. I thank you so much. Only $1,489 left with uh, 4.7 days left. So I got to say thank you to Summer, Angel, Demian, Angelic, 
James, Mike, Andy, Robert, Bennett, Matthew, Jess, Angel, Wagon Breath, and Dan. Y'all are all awesome. I appreciate everyone who supports me, sends me love, prayers, good thoughts, good energy, and helps us keep it together. Y'all are amazing. So please stay that way, and I will talk to y'all in the near future. Peace out. God bless everyone.